in a world whose hosts cried out for a replacement to Thunderdome. Thunderdome! The Top 10 is proud to bring you The Realist. Realist! Realist! Welcome, everybody, to the latest episode of The Realist. Realist! Realist! <laughs> I'm John Roga. I am Matt Nost. And uh, you know how this goes. We have three patrons. One sends in a topic. Two uh, send in their lists. So we count them down <clears throat> and then combine it at the end. Kind of a mini top ten show. Sorry, I got some caught in my throat. <sighs> kind of a mini top ten show. Uh, and we're going to get it done today. Matt. Uh, yeah, we are uh, uh, getting these out on time for once. You know, last month we were a week late, and thankfully you guys were, uh, you know, more than forgiving of that. We provided yes, thank all you. the, conf- the uh, content that you asked for, and uh, we're cooking up some ideas. Uh, you know, f- for uh, to change up the relist a little bit, yeah. give you guys some new stuff uh, coming out to try and be just as interactive and get you guys going after the holidays. Hopefully, we'll have some answers for you. But for right now, let's just enjoy the living shit out of this show <laughs> and make sure you see us live February 29th at uh, thehouseofblues dot com forward slash Houston. Pick up the tickets. We're doing two that night at eight and ten, and uh, the, or May second in uh, London, King's Place dot co dot uk. Hey, just go to the calendar. You can click over to May 2nd. Find us 8 o'clock. We can do a long show for you guys. 30 pounds. Uh, we're going to bang it out. Let's get into this relist. You want to? Boom. Let's do it. Uh, who sent in this thing? This was sent to us. The way the show works is oh. three people are chosen. The first one selects the topic. The next two after that submit their list. And then we talk. We go through their list like our regular show. And uh, then we cobble the two lists together at the end. We don't add uh, any movies of our own or anything like that. This, nope. These are their lists, hence the name, The Relist. <laughs> and uh, we, don't, we don't futz with it. So we pick from uh, people over at uh, patreon.com forward slash the top ten. And the first name selected was Cody Rexford, and he chose the top ten Dwayne Johnson The Ooh, Rock movies. Well, uh, a topic you've been avoiding for quite some time because you don't watch Because he doesn't have movies. ten good movies. Well, he does. He but... doesn't have five good oh, movies. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Here Unless we you want to count cameos. Uh, uh, you want to take the first one this time? <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll take the first one. That's Joe Farrelly. He's the first contestant. Hey, John and Matt, love the show and love all the movies I've watched because of you. Snowpiercer, Heat, Midnight Run, Master and Commander, and Fletch, to name a few. Hey, get your Fletch hey, in look there. Look at that. We got a few on there. That's right. It was great to meet you in London and can't wait to do it again. Yeah! woo Very excited to be part of the relist, but I have to say it's not a topic that's particularly close to my heart. I don't have much in terms of honorable mentions. Some of my choices are movies that happen to feature Dwayne Johnson, but aren't necessarily See? his movies. Yep, yep. Uh, I, I speak Joe's language. Do you? Yes. It's called common sense and rational. (laughs) You're insane. All right. Number 10 is Doom. Is that on the list? Let me see. Going through his list, it is not. All right. As a kid playing Doom and Doom 2 with my dad was always one of the most fun things for me. When this movie came out, I was so excited. And although I didn't particularly enjoy it, the first person shooter scene brought back those memories. So it makes the list for that reason. I respect that. Sure. Not a universally well-liked film. But, you know, The Rock and Carl Urban. I don't know to go how well. you turn that film into a film or that, that video game into a film. So the fact they did. Neither did they. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, right. I don't know how you do it. Yeah. A first person shooter. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. That hunts. Hardcore Harry was about the closest thing I've ever seen. Or Hardcore Henry, whatever that was. I only saw the trailer for that. It looked super interesting. Never saw it because I never heard anybody talking about it thereafter. Nobody did. Yeah, right. Nobody did. Yeah. <laughs> if it was good. Yeah, maybe. Oh, it could have been like Crank. Right. Which looks like, on the face of it, a really dumb premise. And then everybody uh, like, you know, it's actually a lot of fun. Crank was fun. You should see that. Yeah. You see it. And then Crank 2 takes the fun and amps it up even more. It just kind of disregards reality and goes for comedic reality. Yeah, yeah, moment. yeah. Anyway. All right. Which, uh, uh, number nine is uh, The Mummy Returns. Is that on your list? No. Okay. I was 10 when the first Mummy movie came out, so I was excited for the sequel. Although it's not the best, it still has a lot of fun moments. And although Johnson's role is small... It's memorable for being one of the first times a superstar was seen on the big screen. I don't disagree with that. It is memorable. It is small. Um, but it's not as bad as Scorpion King. I've only seen the bad CGI when people point it out. That's the one. Yeah, I've never it's watched bad. the movie because it just looks so stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the they, Mummy Returns is a good movie, though. I thought better than fine. the first Mummy, I thought. Mummy. Oh, you like it better than the well, first I one? Do. I really? do. Really? Because you get the Rosalind Sanchez-Rachel Vice fight with the knives. That's pretty cool. Okay. I dig it. 
Sure. I thought the first movie was a bit cheesy. I like the second movie a little more. Got the little air balloon. Yeah, but I like it for its cheesiness. All right, fair. Uh, Number eight on Joe's list is Pain and Gain. Uh, Nope, that's a punt. A punt, okay. We are holding that. Go ahead, my man. This is from our third contestant, uh, which is Ellis Menchaca. Oh, no. I know. One of the dreaded Menchaca (laughs) trio. Oh, Jesus. The Troika of Menchacas, who should be... At Houston, if we don't see all three of you pricks there right. with your significant others, and I'm looking into a camera that is not recording nope, us, nope. Uh, there will be held – we will drive to San Antonio or whichever other Texan city you live in with our head of security, Matt Hasso, and just bring a can of whoop-ass to open on you. Right. Actually, we're going to watch Hasso do that because that's what head of security does, and I think he enjoys it. Uh, you know, why deprive someone of what they're good at? Yep. But anyway, Manchaka, it says, Hi, Matt and John. Really psyched to get another shot at a realist. Woo. The Rock presents some interesting choices. I can't say he's one of those actors that immediately gets me excited about a movie, but when his stuff works, it really works. I'd like to dedicate uh, this list to my girlfriend, who as of Thanksgiving became my fiance. Oh, congratulations. Miss Mindy Sue. Oh, she better be in Houston. Uh it says, Mindy, our love, like the top ten, will never die. Oh, Lord. Um, Ellis is leaning in hard here. Well, we're going to be enshrined in the Smithsonian, <laughs> and your guys' love will uh, live on eternally. So there you go. That is two things. Yeah. Both will stand the test of time. At 10, Mr. Ellis Menchaca. Yeah. Congratulations on the engagement. Yeah, congratulations. Way, as the other guys. Uh, that's a punt. All right. That seems reasonable yes, to me. Yes, I agree. If you're going to include cameos, that's a, you know. Yeah. Uh, nine is San Andreas. Is it you doing your Cardi B? Not on the list. Not on the list. Wow. Um, so Mr. Minchaka writes, That's Surprising. It's a big, dumb disaster movie. Hell yes, it is. But it's a big, dumb disaster movie done well. Yep. Is that the truth? It is a fun, dumb disaster movie. And done The well? Rock... Huh? Done well? <laughs> yes. Its comp would be... Done well enough. 2012? Yeah, probably around that area. Okay. Except in 2012, they were really trying to save each other. In San, San Andreas, Andreas oh, yeah, it's just about all he cares family. about is saving his family and fuck everyone else. So it's a little bit of a stretch in terms of plot, but... You do what you got to do in life. I guess so, but it's good. And The Rock... This is the thing that's weird about Rock, man, is like you can't see him in a regular job. He's too large to be in a regular job. So it's weird when he plays these regular Joes because you're like, I don't know any regular Joes that are that big. I just don't. Or that ripped, too. So, all right. Anyway. Yeah, neither do I. Yeah. Uh, number eight uh, is just Faster. Oh, yeah. I remember that one. I don't. Let me see if it's on faster. the list. Okay. Not on the list. No, it's a car race movie with Billy Bob Thornton. Wow, I do not remember this. I think it is a car race movie, or or it's a like he's breaking out of prison, something like that. Oh, okay, yep. the generic poster. Now I remember it. Yep, it's it's basically a closer shot of Walking Tall. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, very much. It's so. Darker in tone, but it's the same exact thing. <laughs> Just him on the front, looking mean, faster. And it is a. Uh, Following a 10-year prison stint, driver Dwayne Johnson sprints through the gates to take vengeance on those responsible for his brother's murder. Yeah. Mr. Menchaca says, it's ironic that this was the movie, uh, that this was the movie, was the last movie. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He made before joining the Fast and Furious franchise. Okay, that, I guess that is ironic. The movie let uh, the world know he was ending his terrible Disney movie phase and finally getting back on track to becoming the action star we all wanted. Yeah, man. Uh, okay, sure. See? Okay, well, <laughs> just because he pivoted into making mediocre movies on this side instead of mediocre movies on that side. How dare you. Doesn't mean I should stand up and shoot a flare off into the, you <laughs> know. <laughs> the Rock. Mazel tov. <laughs> uh, where are you at? All right, what's your number? No, s- no it's yours. What's your seven? Seven is Welcome to the Jungle, a.k.a. the, Whoa. The new Jumanji? Uh, oh, the no, new? The Rundown. Oh. Yeah. The Rundown is a punt. Oh, nice. All right. Seven. All okay. right. Number six is The Other Guys, which was the punt from earlier. Oh, sure. Uh, even though Johnson dies about 20 minutes in, his role is still memorable. The dumb badassness of his partnership with Jackson is what gives Farrell and Wahlberg their chance to prove themselves. 
I love this movie, not necessarily because of Johnson, as his role is very small, but his part is one of the things I enjoy. His role is not very small. If you're in the first 20 minutes of the movie, you're in a significant part of the movie. You're not small. It's a medium-sized role. Well, in the parlance of acting, there are no small roles. Thank you. Only small actors. Exactly. Yes. yes. So he took the job and brought it to life. Him and, and Sam have great chemistry. Mr. Menchaca says, I realize it was a very small role, but him and Sam Jackson as the badass cops on the force stole the movie. Yeah. I'd be there day one for that spinoff. There you go. Yeah. I What's can see problem? it working. They have good chemistry between the two of them. Yeah. Okay. At seven, yeah. I've got Moana. Uh, that's a massive punt, my man. Okay. Is that what he wrote there? That's a massive punt, yeah, my yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, if anyone says Moana before this number, it's a massive It's amazing punt. that he has your patois <laughs> down so well. Ooh. Fucker studying French over here. Yes, all right. Well, I got to stay up with uh, Charles Mouvier oh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> we have, we haven't done that in a while. We are looking at the way uh, John sounds. Uh, cinema uh, Paradiso in uh, Criterion 4K is uh, magnifique. 4K. Uh, I, six, I've got Gridiron Gang. Oh, nice choice. Not on the list. Is it? I've never seen it. It just looks so cliche. It's all right. It's not great. It's all right, though. Okay. He wrote... More of a straight drama than most of his roles. Yep. I appreciate that it didn't shy away from the harsher realities of gang life, life or youth incarceration. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, okay, I'd it, it looks from afar like it was just by the numbers. Oh, nice! But I don't know if it was or was not. Okay, no, it is by the numbers, but it's also uplifting. Okay, so it's a cool, it's a cool little film. It's not a great little film, but it's certainly a cool little film. And it was one of those ones that kind of gets lost. And yes, he's right; they don't pull any punches about the gang life. Is it clumsy at times? Sure. But the intention is is good. And so you kind of forgive it for that. So that's what I would say. All right. What's your five? Uh, five on uh, this list of uh, Joe Farrelly's is Fast Five. That's a punt. All right. What's your uh, five? My five is the punt from earlier, uh, which is Pain and Gain. Oh, yeah. Pain and Gain. What did uh, he say? Uh, Joe says, I never thought a Michael Bay movie that wasn't Bad Boys would make a top ten list. Sorry, John. Fuck you. But this is one is a fun to watch because of the total ineptness of the characters portrayed. It's Wahlberg's movie, but Johnson is great fun. I couldn't agree more. I think it's a great Michael Bay film. Great small. Shows you he can do small when he wants to do small. He just doesn't need to. Just do 13 hours. Do something like that. That was good. That was really good. I was surprised that... I, I guess because it was Michael Bay, no one wanted to take it too seriously. Yeah. Or it was Krasinski before he, he saw him in Jack Ryan. Or Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, the Schreiber brother. Right, uh, Pablo, with, yeah. Yeah, yeah, with uh, Orange is the New Black, but it wasn't right. some huge A-level cast as far as movies go. Yeah. Uh, whereas, oh, so for Pain and Gain, Mr. Menchaca says... Yeah, what does he say? This movie showcased The Rock's range, and it's always nice to see something from Michael Bay that isn't a terrible... Soul crushing Transformers movie. <laughs> you know what? Dude, these guys, both of them, man. I, I like, they're singing my tune, and I'm over here just dancing. Just dancing. Skitter, skitter, I'm coming out of a Transformer shirt just for that. Uh, go right ahead. In Houston. And uh, more than likely, that shirt will be loud, gaudy, and terrible. And make a lot of money. Will Don't it? forget that fucking part. And make a lot of money. Yeah, but if that's, don't forget that part. If that's the metric by which we judge whether or not something was good, no one is judging goodness by money. But I'm saying clearly enough people loved it enough to go back over and over and over again to make it money. So he must have struck some kind of chord that made people want to come back and like it because over and over again. Things blowing up don't oh. take subtitles, and that tra- that translates across every language. Tell that to Charlie Zaner's that bombed at the box office, or a million other action franchises that bombed at the box office because there's dialogue. Does it? Tra- da- Transformers. Does this dialogue in Transformers? But it's scant. It's mostly, hey, this 100-foot robot is fighting this other 100-foot robot. And there's people running around like rats. You haven't even seen them all, so you can't even talk about it. I haven't seen the last one. I've seen all the others. Yeah, there's a lot of dialogue. The three hours, eight, three, two and a half hours of, like, a lot of dialogue. Honestly, that we could line up on a dartboard and throw darts at and come up with roughly the same because it's all the generic. Yeah. It's it's not like it's some new – breaking any new ground whatsoever. I didn't say it was. It's but there's fucking, a lot of dialogue. It's the Denty Moore of bad scripts. Ooh, Denty Moore. That's a nice reference. It's just meat and potatoes of – Stew. Yeah. What boring thing do you – here it is. Now <laughs> just glossed over with shiny packaging and things blowing up. <laughs> All right. You got your shots in. You happy now? Let's move on. We, we keep going. Too bad The Rock hasn't done a Transformer. <laughs> not yet. Uh, what's your four? Uh, four is fighting with my family. 
Not on this list. All right. He says, although Johnson, Joel says this, although Johnson's role in this movie overall is small, his influence is huge. I went in not really knowing what to expect and ended up really enjoying it. Florence Pugh has exploded this year. When you compare this performance with Midsommar, you can see great signs of her range. Thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly agree. Florence Pugh is incredible in this movie. This is not just a pro wrestling movie. This is a very sweet movie about following your dreams accidentally choosing this path and seeing where it takes you and the journey. I mean, so the struggles and the obstacles you have to overcome to decide if you want this to be your dream and your life and the jealousy you can encounter, not just from friends, but family as well. So, so much about this film is incredible. Yes, it's a pro, it's a film about a pro wrestler, a real pro wrestler, a female pro wrestler, but it's more about following your dreams and your, and what you have to overcome to get there to show how much you want it. Okay. That's what I say. So you haven't seen it. I've only Give heard good chance. things. Give it a chance, man. I, I think you like it. From the outside, it's like, oh, wrestling movie. Okay. You right. Know. I understand that. But I heard it was good, so eventually I will. Okay. It's a good sports movie at that point. Yeah, and it's some real good actors in it doing some real, like, honest emotional work here. Uh, all right, what's your number four? Uh, four is Walking Tall. Oh, shit. Not on this list. Walking uh, Mr. Tall. Mr. Menchaca literally just writes, it's good. I like that. The brevity of it? Yeah. Just, that's, well, it, I, it's not Citizen yeah. Kane. Nope, it's not. Which is, you know, an overhyped. Uh... Oh, my God. It's just, <laughs> it's just all the greatest hits here. It's all the greatest hits. Uh, to me, unfortunately, Citizen Kane is that just no movie can, can be built up that hard and live up to it. It's, okay. it's impossible. Before okay. I ever saw it, I heard numerous people being like, well, that's. The no-brainer. That's the best film of all time. Yes, it and is. And then you see it and you're like, I understand what you're saying, but it's not the best <laughs> film. Objectively, like, I hear what you say. Yeah, which is like, this is the first dolly shot. And it's like, it's crazy to think. Nobody thought of a dolly shot, and it's a good one, and yeah. it's, it's really cool. But all those small little things, to me, don't add up to being... All right. But that's just me personally. Of but I'm not going to take is. away. Yeah, no, no. You're part of a large chorus of individuals that has that feeling. Yeah. Um, a dying large course, but yes. Exactly. Sadly. AFI in 100 years will look totally totally yeah. different. Yeah. Citizen Game will no longer be number – it'll probably be top 10. Yeah. Top five. Maybe. I would imagine so. There will always be – since it's been considered in the argument for the best of all time for this long, it will still be in that discussion. Yeah. Vertigo has beaten it a couple times recently. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But Which I don't still, agree with. It's not even the best. Hitchcock. Uh, I wouldn't say so. Yeah. There are others that I like better. Me too. Uh, All right, so that was number what? My four. What's your three? Three is Central Intelligence. Not on my list. Wow. I've heard nothing but good things about that one. That is a good movie. He said, I first saw this movie about a year and a half after it came out after hearing good things. Good things, good things. The first collaboration between Hart and Johnson had me from the bar scene. A really funny movie that deserves its place on this list. That's Kevin Hart and Dwayne Johnson. Yeah, I agreed. This is really stupendously funny and heartfelt and real. Um, I mean, this idea of... Coming back, who doesn't have this idea of going back to their high school reunion or whatever and encountering people later and the changes and who doesn't know someone who was supposed to like take on the world and succeed out of high school and just completely blew it or circumstances beyond their control just didn't let them get to where they wanted to get to. Okay. And then you come back and you meet them and you're like, oh, man, they're teaching, you know, first grade and all right, cool, man, if, if you figured it out and, and you're sitting here trying to make your dreams come true. So it's it's a crazy little thing and a lot of that goes into the situation of course and of course a a spy uh, a subplot about like The Rock having or Dwayne Johnson having some kind of uh, connection to some botched mission and he's on he's gone rogue as an agent and Kevin Hart is his old high school friend that he is using to try and get uh, back into the good graces uh, and solve the crime so he's not alone. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty interesting. Uh, all right. Your, what's your number three? My three is the punt fast five. Oh okay. What does he say? I only started watching the Fast and Furious movies this year. I can easily understand why this is the best regarded a fun action movie with Johnson adding a new element to the idea of who is actually pursuing this crew. The safe scene is dumb, but by that point in the movie, you buy it. Mr. Minchaka writes, I read a review before I saw the movie that described The Rock's character as, quote, pardon me, a muscle-bound, oil-drenched version of Tommy Lee Jones from The Fugitive. Unquote. It's 100% accurate and fits perfectly uh, in this goofy franchise. There you go. Fast Five, I did see. That's when they're in Brazil and yes. the bank safe down the road. Right. Sure. Oh, uh, yeah. That bank safe scene is stupid. There's a lot of stupid in that movie. Wow. It only goes stupider. Oh, my God. It, it, I mean, not from that. That movie is fine as far as suspension of disbelief mm. in a movie. Look, they're going up against submarines. You know, Hobbs and Shaw, they lasso a helicopter. 
it's it's retarded at this point. And I mean that in the most offensive way humanly possible. <laughs> if anybody's listening out there. And did he? Yes. Oh, shit. Without a doubt. You attack me. Well, it was a fun show. Uh, it was. was. <laughs> Cancel me. Um, did you see Michelle Wolf's new stand-up? No. The, On what Netflix? is it, a joke show or yeah. whatever? Fuck, it's good. It's good? It's so good. And she addresses that cancel bullshit, too. It's really it's funny. A lot of, now a lot of people, yeah. they don't feel as yeah. uh, concerned. Because. But for me, I get more disseminating. Now, you're right, because a lot of people are addressing it. The nuance of how you address it is really the difference. And she does a great job. This is job. what I was talking about a couple weeks ago when and we were talking about writing jokes down. All yeah. that. And like Somebody out there has the best airport or airplane food joke. Right. So I've heard a lot of jokes now about cancel culture and Me right. Too and all that stuff. Some people have much better versions of the exact same joke, and yeah. you're like, that's good. I like that one. I can listen to it. This other one seems derivative of everybody else's. Yeah. It's nothing against you. It's just you found an easy thought. Any hoozle. <laughs> Fast Five. Um, yeah, I totally get why Fast Five was such a huge hit. Yeah. And they've spun it off afterwards. It just – it's gotten to ludicrous you know, proportions yeah. for me. Yeah. And I have I didn't see the last – I don't watch them because I see the trailer and I'm like, I uh, – no. Yeah. I don't mind it for some reason, I guess, in Mission Impossible, but in this it just – it seems even more hyperbolic. Right, right. Uh, all right. That's your number what? Three. What's your two? Jumanji. Welcome to the Jungle. Is that the first one? Yes. Okay. He just wrote Jumanji. Yeah. Boom. What do you got? What's it? What, wait. For Jumanji. What does it say? Oh, why? What's the number? Is it on it? You didn't say. Deuce. Oh, it's his two, two as well? Yeah. He said, I was surprised as most uh, were uh, to how enjoyable this movie was. I already spoke about John's and Hart's chemistry. But the addition of Jack Black and one of my favorite Doctor Who companions, Karen Gillan, hell, shout out, make a great cast. This movie does the mix of reboot and sequel perfectly, and I'm looking forward to the sequel because who doesn't want to see Johnson play DeVito? Well, I've seen the sequel. Johnson does play DeVito. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and he wrote, I was really surprised. It's almost the exact same oh, opening. Wow. Okay. I was really surprised by how much I love this movie. Uh, the Rock leads a great ensemble, and he dives into this out-of-body character beautifully. Oh. For mm-hmm. me, he is great. This is this is a genuinely good Dwayne Johnson movie. Yeah, uh, but Jack Black steals it for me. I think really, that's the best part of playing the, movie. the girl. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so, because he's got to do to me his is more acting. He's got to create two characters on yeah, some yeah, level, yeah. and that's it, it's so flawless. Okay. I think it's pretty fantastic. It's nothing against anyone else because it is way better than I anticipated. Me too. It's really fun. Uh, Carno- uh, Cannavale is an interesting villain. Oh, yeah. Um, so it's a balanced all the way around. Man. And Karen Gillum's carving out a hell of a career. For yeah, her. man. She steals the sequel. Does she? She's great in the sequel, just like she was great in Endgame. She took a character that I thought was going to be a throwaway and turned it into something. I mean, they obviously did with the writing, but her her acting abilities made it so yeah. it was a great storyline. Let's yeah. take advantage of her because she's damn good. Yeah. Under all, all that makeup and prosthetics mm-hmm. and the kind of soulless nature of where the character starts, it's impressive. Yeah, I agree. Numero uno for you, you is? Uh, Moana. Oh, that's the punt for me earlier. Yes, punt from earlier. Um, okay, I guess since I'm the lower, I'll say this. I'm, I have no real complaints about uh, Moana. It just didn't, didn't work for me like it did for everyone else, but The Rock was still great in it. Wow. I agree. I thought it was fine. <laughs> You're talking to a guy that watches way more animation than you, and you're scoffing. Uh, I'm scoffing because I have a different opinion. Uh, this was number one without question. One of my favorite movies of the decade, and one of my favorite Disney movies of all time. Dwayne's character Maui is a great side to Mo- sidekick to Moana, and the film is one I revisit over and over again. The story, the music, the characters are all incredible, and it's easily number one for me. You're welcome. Thanks again for reading my list. All the best, Joe Farrelly. All right. Mr. Minjaka writes, uh, I already told you. I, yeah. I read it before. You I was did. just trying to look up because to me it started getting to the point where it's that that stupid chicken character. Uh huh. They've done it a few times. I, think, I know there's one other that's got a dumb chicken. Which one is it? Right. I mean, one other Pixar movie? One other Disney animated. Because this is oh. a Disney animated, oh, not Disney a Pixar. Anime. Sorry, Disney animated. Yeah. And there was another one with a dumb chicken. Like, okay. Le- legitimately had the exact same. For some reason, Google's giving me all the same movies over and over again. It's like the same five. <laughs> oh, because they subdivided into movies, movies about love, movies about – no, I just want to see the actual list of movies. Okay. They're including Bolt, Meet the Robinsons. Guys, what are we what are we Bolt? About? Yeah. Bolt doesn't count. Was there a chicken in Bolt? No, no, no. I'm saying – I guess I'll look up Disney and a movie 
animated movies with chicken. Okay. Animated movies with a chicken. Moana. Yeah. And Moana. maybe it was just another animated movie in general. Wasn't there another one with a dumb I don't know, man. I'll chicken? Be honest with you. I don't know. See the size of that chicken? Yeah, yeah, Robin Hood, Chicken Little, Chicken Little, Tres Caballeros. Perhaps I'm crazy. I thought they had just done another dumb chicken character or dumb bird par- character or something like that. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so that was Mo- – there's it seven, your number one. Uh, I was uh, Moana. Right. Yeah, so my number one is the rundown. Oh, wow. Wow. Number yeah. one. He writes, this is a simple, old-school action movie that was executed flawlessly. I pretty much agree with that. Yeah. The Rock is great. Christopher Walken chews all the scenery in the best way, and this movie makes me want to believe in Sean uh, William Scott. Very true. Hmm. I'd love to see Peter Berg do something like this again. I didn't realize that was a Peter Berg. Yeah. Huh. Yep. Berg directed that one. It's an interesting departure given everything else he's done. Well, I think this was uh, one before he started doing these bigger films. Okay. So this is like building towards his ability to do Lone Survivor and and so oh, so is it Lone Survivor is that what it's called? Yeah, he did Lone Survivor. And then um, He did The Kingdom. He did The Kingdom. He did Deepwater Horizon, I believe. Which was great. He did, he did was that he a terrible no. other film. Uh, what else did he do? He did the Battleship film that was horrible. Yeah, that was terrible. Oof. Yeah, that's fine. You know, I mean, you do that much stuff, you're going to make a bad one. Yeah. Did he do Hancock? Oh, I think he did do Hancock. That's a premise I think could still work. Yeah, it's funny. It's unfortunate it didn't, but I, I think that there's something to that. Let's see. He did Very Bad Things, which was funny. The Rundown. That was his second movie, The Rundown. Mm, good for you. <clears throat> Friday Night Lights, The Kingdom, Hancock. You're ready to do that. Um, Battleship, Lone Survivor, um, Patriot's Day, which was good. Patriot's Day was good. Uh, Mile 22 I never saw, and Deepwater Horizon. <sighs> Oh, was it the Mark Wahlberg where he's just standing with a sniper rifle or something? Yeah, yeah I never saw it either. Near it. Go near it. <clears throat> yeah. Well, uh, good for Petey Berg. Yeah, yeah. Shout out. All right, well, that's those separate lists here for the relist. Are we combining these things? That we are. Okay. I'm opening a separate document to combine these two things. Please do. I'm going to rosin up the bongos here. There we go. All right, rosin so... Up. Uh, what do we have in common? We've got Moana, Moana Pain and Gain, Jumanji. I think Jumanji is number one because yeah. it's 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, I agree. Moana, I've got seven. Do, uh, one is here. It's one here, sorry. Yeah. Uh, you don't have Rundown? Yeah, I do have Rundown later down on the list at number seven. Oh, it's oh. the same thing. Oh, let me say, a fun movie that hit right as Johnson was trying to make it in the movies and when Sean William Scott was at his peak. A great little adventure with enough action and laughs to keep me locked in. Plus, Christopher Walken as a villain is always fun. Uh, personally, I would pick Rundown between the two. Uh, Rundown or what? Or Moana. Yeah, okay, because it's a Dwayne Johnson film. Sure. Right, I'll take that. I'll let you get away with that. That's not my list. Well, that's more Moana thing. Uh, Fast Five, where do you have that? I have it at five. We've got that at three five. Then okay. Pain and Gain is lower for you, right? Yeah, eight. So, all right, so Fast Five. Uh, pain and Gain is eight, five, eight. Do we have anything that beats five, eight? I don't think so. We put the uh, put Rundown in, put Jumanji in, right? Yeah. Mummy Returns, any? Don't have San okay. Andreas. Yeah. We don't have nope. other guys. Where do you got that? Six. Nah, it's 10 6. Okay. So I think pain and gain. That makes sense. Pain and gain. And then the other guys. Yep, 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 yep. Hell of a jump for the other guys. All right. Number six. Uh, and then we don't have anything else in common. I got Walking Tall, Faster, San Andreas, and Gridiron Gang. Mm hmm. Nope. Nope. Well, okay. What's your next highest? I got a four. Walking tall. Uh, I have central intelligence at three. Okay, central intelligence. Then walking tall. Hmm. Your next highest, sir. Fighting with my family at four. Fighting with the old fam. What's your next highest? Fast five at five. Already got it. Other guys at six. 
Already got it. Run down at seven. All right, I got you beat then. Gridiron Gang. There we go. And we are done. Nice. All right, let's do this thing. The top ten Dwayne Johnson movies on the relist. Yeah. <laughs> at number ten. Gridiron Gang. At number nine. Fighting with my family. At number eight. Walking tall. At number seven. Central Intelligence. At number six. The other guys. At number five. Pain and gain. At number four. Fast five. At number three. Moana. At number two. The Rundown. And our number one Dwayne Johnson movie on the real list is. Three words. Jumanji. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Welcome to the jungle. There's the other four words. Welcome to the jungle. I don't right. remember that. That's why I asked you. Was like, is that the first one? Because I, <laughs> I don't even know that. Yeah. This one's what? Level up or next level? Next level. Next level. Right, right, right. It's a video game reference. Get it? <laughs> <laughs> Do ya? Uh, all right. Well, thanks to uh, Cody Rexford, Joe Farrelly, and Ellis Menchaca for sending in uh, one, the topic, and the other two. Yes, sir. Their lists for us to talk about. A lot of fun. Uh, Ellis, good luck with Mindy Sue. And congratulations on you both again for getting ho- hitched or getting uh, fianced to each other. Affianced. Ho- ho- affianced. Hopefully you'll be getting hitched soon and uh, you'll bring, uh, maybe we'll have another top 10 baby down the road. No pressure. No pressure. Uh, yes. We've, I'm had not a a... We've had a couple. Um, I'm not going to negate that. And we also, um, as a side hustle, we come up with baby names. That's true. That's true. And can rattle off 20 beautiful baby names regardless of sex at any yep. mo- drop of any hat. Yep. Any hat. Uh, any hat. Doesn't matter. No matter where. Room full of hats. First one that drops. I got 20 names on the ready for you in the chamber. Ready to roll. I think that's it for us this week on the relist. Everybody, thank you so much that supports us over at patreon.com forward slash the top 10 mm-hmm. with the number 10. Once again, if you want to come out and see us, uh, Houston, February 29th, go to houseofblues.com forward slash Houston. Uh, we got two shows, 8 and 10. It's 25 or 40 bucks for both shows. And then kingsplace.co.uk on May 2nd, we're, being a king, we're going to be at King's Place, 8 p.m. It's going to be a two-and-a-half-hour show, uh, 30 pounds. Come on out. Let's have a lot of fun. Let's sell that out. It's a 400-seater. I know we can do it. Yeah. And if we believe, if we build it, they will come. Let's go. <laughs> Let's, Let's make it. this happen. Come here. Come uh, follow. Come see us. Come watch us live. You know it's a lot of fun. And we'll be uh, hanging out with you all I- I- before and after the show uh, and during the show, it looks like. So uh, follow Matt at Matt Nost. Follow me at the Rokas S. Follow us online at Top 10 Show on Twitter. And uh, that's it for the Relist. Relist. <laughs>